episode of Audio Knots, your pop culture palate cleanser. I am Eric Oldboy, online with the one, the only variant of Loki himself, Mr. Ren. What's going on, my friend? What it do? Welcome back. We are back. We're on time, hitting it once a week rather than, you know, once every three weeks. And yeah. we have we got some mad hot Loki talk to get to in a little bit. But before we do, uh, how you been? What have you been up to? Um, actually, besides my, you know, hot betas, Ooh, I've been yeah. trying to uh, promote a uh, photo session I'm going to do. Oh, OK. How does that work? Because, you know, how uh, we are basically entrepreneurs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I own a apparel um, business. Yes. You want to give them a shout out? Yeah, I'll do, a pl- I'll do a plug. It's uh, called Urban Spirits Apparel. And it's mm-hmm. like basically uh, traditional clothes, but in a, in a modern, more everyday wear. Traditional in what sense? As in my background. Oh, okay. Perfect. But uh, yeah, so I need an update on my website and, you know, social platform and stuff like that. So I'm trying to mm-hmm. figure out a way to ask, hey, hey, people, I need some models. Can Are you, you looking for like any specific types? Young kids, old people, young, young and old people? Uh, my target audience is like basically teenage, teenage and up. Oh, okay. Got it. If you, if you could wear X small and like, you know, unisex, then mm-hmm. you're my target. Nice. Perfect. And so, so I think my whole idea is like any, I'm trying to be local because I don't want to travel for photography. Right. And I don't have the money to pay them, <laughs> you know, as models. Can you swap them something, some swag or something? Well, I was going to like, I was brainstorming and I was like, maybe, you know, uh, you get the merch that you wear to model, you know, so you get some merch from me. Sure. And then uh, I'm going to allow you to bring one outfit and do like a 30 minute photo session. Oh, so they can have photos for themselves. They could go all Instagram thought and post it later. Yeah. Yeah. So I get some and then they get some. And so win, win, right? How does that sound? Yeah. Who doesn't want to get some? get some get get some no that's awesome i think that sounds like a win-win you should just hit your social medias i bet you get some people yeah I'm, i i've been trying to post i mean uh designing my little flyer yeah and then i think i'll post it like maybe tomorrow over the weekend and try to get some people you know who who doesn't want a little free mini photo session right yeah i think that sounds like a pretty good deal i'd sign up for that yeah, and i just need to use you for my you know website <laughs> Hey, let's sign. make sure you know what you need because all things matter make sure you have them sign something that you own those photographs oh i know i gotta make one of those i think we have a generic one i can just probably yeah just I, I have a generic you can have yeah yeah i'll just uh replace some wordings and call it good yeah because it's a good idea we've learned the hard way from things like that that it, it matters the nicest yeah. person could change their mind in a year from now <laughs> yeah you're using me too much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, you become huge, and now I see myself on national TV. I don't like it anymore. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and then I put like on my little flyer, photographer level beginner. <laughs> so don't expect anything out of it. Honestly, the hardest part I think sometimes of model photography is directing the models. Like I never know what to say at all. I'm like, bend this way, do this. You know, yeah. like. I don't know, like that's a real skill all in itself, like be able to tell them how to kind of like do their thing so it looks good. Because sometimes the weirdest kind of move and turn looks fantastic when you take the pictures. Yeah. It's always like, you might feel a little awkward, but trust me, it's going to look amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that's cool. Right on. Uh, what else you been up to? That's it. You know, just designing, basically working on uh, our, our website, working on art stuff. Nice. Try, trying to get our Patreon so we can start promoting our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So we have a very packed show today. Very Again. packed show. Again. Again. Well, you know, I feel like we could spend a little bit of time on the season finale of Loki all by itself because it was so good. Yeah, we could probably spend the whole episode talking about it. And there's, there's, yeah, you know, there's already breakdown videos on YouTube where bros are spending like a full hour you know, yapping about Loki. So I I don't doubt that we could spend 10 minutes on it. (laughs) I mean, like props to those dudes and uh, bros and broettes, right? Like they probably stayed up till 12 o'clock to watch the midnight showing and then 
watch it again to take notes and then yeah, do and their then, video and yeah. then do all their editing. And like, I always wondered like how YouTube people get away with pulling like all this, like video Footage. from, yeah. Yeah. From like copyrighted stuff, but it happens consistently on YouTube. I don't, I don't understand how it works. Yeah. Like for Loki, for example, they straight up show scenes from Loki, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day. Cause I've been listening to all sorts of different podcasts. And you would be shocked at how many people do that. I was listening to one podcast a couple of days ago where literally the guy pulled segments. It was audio from movies, one right after another. I'm like, how does he get away with this? And still get monetized? Man. I, I, maybe he's not monetized at all. We I don't should, know. We should try it, see if we get canceled. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we've, we've kind of tiptoed there a little bit, but never like this guy was doing. I mean, because literally his was a movie review show. And he would play like huge segments of movies. It was incredible. Oh, speaking of uh, demonetize, one of my uh, videos, my beta video, I just posted on um, our Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I put some dope ass music in there, right? Yeah. 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 Or, yeah. Where were we downloading it from our platform that we downloaded? And they're like, copyright infringement. Like, what the heck? You can't what? monetize that work. And so um, I went back to like the website and mm-hmm. they said that if you post it on YouTube, they might do that. Oh, and really? You, and then you could download the license right here. So I'll go, I went to download the license. It's basically just like a text file. Yeah. And then do you just turn it into YouTube? Yeah. Then you go to YouTube, you know, dispute. And then they're like, what, what do you, do you own it or stuff like that? And then you just kind of copy and paste that text into a box and submit it. And the next day they're like, approve. Oh, okay. So basically it's saying, Hey, I've, I've, this guy's purchased the license to this. He, he's good to go kind of thing. Cause it's like, royalty free music that you got yeah, off of a yeah. service we pay for yeah so it works it doesn't say you know you can't monetize something like, yeah yeah nice cool that's good to know good to know all right let's do it let's uh let's jump into the healthy stream okay let's start on disney plus i mean we got to start with the the big the big show that just finished up loki episode six the finale the season finale and i think we're gonna hit like major spoilers from oh. the get so if you haven't seen loki yet that's on you uh you yeah, the whole be, weekend should be watching yeah you had yeah. all weekend so that, that is on you but we were almost right i think we were sort of right you know we were predicting that loki was gonna give us kang and they didn't waste any time like we kind of wondered if like it would go the entire episode and then we would get like kang uh, at the very end you know like thanos style and they gave us the variant version of Kang right away, probably 10 minutes in. Yeah. I'm like, he comes in the door. I'm like, it's Kang. <laughs> well, we all know. So if you're if you're new to Loki and the Marvel Universe, we already knew that the actor, Jonathan May, uh, Majors, had been cast as Kang for Quantumania, um, the Ant-Man movie. And so as soon as we saw Jonathan Majors, we're like, it's Kang. And yeah, it was so exciting. But then you thought, well, this doesn't seem like the Kang that I thought Kang would be. He's more quirky than he is like, you know, he wasn't evil at all. You know, Yeah, he wasn't a tyrant. He wasn't going to, you know, he wasn't Kang the conqueror. He was like Kang the bistro guy that it's like making jokes as you sit down and have a coffee. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and probably I'm sure you're thinking that, you know, he even himself said there's a bajillion versions of himself and he never once goes into specifics of what his name is. He says, some people call me a a conqueror. Some people call me he who never ends or whatever the hell it is. The little time thing says, he says, some people just call me a jerk. He goes, but there's a lot of versions of me that are way worse than me. And you don't want to mess with this timeline that I've created. And that's because I think that he's the character Immortus. And for those who read the comics or don't read the comics, Immortus is another variant of Kang himself. And he's a smart scientist version, which is what this guy seems like. He even says at some point, I'm flesh and bones, just like you. I've just, but you don't know how many lifetimes I've lived. And he's all the tricks he's doing are based off technology that he has. So I'm not sure that that version of Kang even had any powers at all. It was probably the Nathaniel Richards Immortus version. What do you think? Yeah, because like um, at the beginning where he like explaining the whole timeline thing, he said that, you know, he 
uh, he was he found other dimensions and other you know parallel universes and that's kind of like when tony you know basically uh made time travel yeah and tony is human so it's kind of like that yeah and so uh it really opened up a lot of things is a lot of people i've seen uh some hit and miss type of reviews like it feels like the real comic booky people that watch the MCU as a whole really enjoyed it because this is this is a big moment in MCU. The people who only watched it, like uh, I think it was Slate Magazine, which is kind of an indie, cool hipster type magazine, they probably only watched you know, I would, they watch Loki one day and the next day they're watching Mad Men or something, and so theirs was like, oh, it was such a downer, it was a disappointment. There was nothing really happening. Other this like quirky guy at the end. But it opens up so many things. I mean, one, what we all thought, it opens up the multiverse. But two, more importantly, and I think he alludes to it when he's describing the wars that were happening, he even used that they were secret and this and that. I'm pretty sure that where our next phase is secret wars. You think so? I think so. I think the secret wars is between the multiverse. So I think the multiverse and the secret wars are one and the same thing. Well, it's you're probably right because like uh, they gave us civil war, and then yep. they get fake. They gave us the uh, infinity war. Yep. What's the next war, baby? Yeah, 2015 secret wars, Marvel Universe. They love because they found they found the cookbook that works. They know all the spices and the seasoning to make this thing really go. And so it's pretty apparent that they take these big overarching stories from Marvel's in, uh, comic book line. And they spread it out via multiple movies. And right. Secret Wars would be perfect because you're going to get the multiverse stuff. You're going to be able to bring in the Fantastic Four, you know, because Nathaniel Richards, you know, if that sounds familiar to anybody, he's a related to Reed Richards. And so you have all these connections and things like that that are happening. It's just really kind of cool. I can't wait for um, Spider Man because one of my favorite outfits from Spider Man is the Secret War outfit. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, it's like black, has some blues and reds in there. It's freaking awesome. In Spider-Man, they've never really let us down. He's always like rocking cool new outfits. So I kind of like all the things they do too. But this like this opens up this whole like idea now, opens up bringing back any kind of lost character. So uh, people who are watching the MCU have to understand that the actors themselves, you know, in real life kind of get bored with playing the same part over and over again. You know, look at Robert Downey Jr., and uh, this opens it up for uh, Disney and Marvel to recast people and say, well, they're just from a, a different universe, a different timeline. And so it really kind of opens up those things. It also makes an easy transition to give us um, X-Men, those kind of characters. Uh, and we've been expecting this for a long time, but you can finally see it starting to like come to fruition. Yeah, for like uh, those DC fans out there, you know, it, they kind of did that with... Um... The, the TV shows, yeah. Mm-hmm. And for example, uh, Superman Returns with uh, Brandon Ralph, Ralph, Ralph yeah. the movie. He was Superman, and then in this in this show, he was basically Ant Man, the uh, the Adam. And then because of the multiverse aspect, he gets to play another version of Superman again, which was kind of cool, you know. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's really smart on both of them because then. For all of us that worry so much about everything having continuity, no matter what you do, you can fix the continuity. Yeah, because every every movie or every show that comes out, they're always like, "This show fixed the plot hole of this show." You know, like it's like, yeah. It's... <laughs> well, at this point, there are no plot holes. It was yeah. just a different universe. It was yeah. something that we didn't realize that we were in a different universe. I mean, and they give that to us right away. So um, after Loki and Sylvie break into Kang the Conqueror's castle and they meet him and he does his whole diatribe. And by the way, Jonathan Majors is a great actor because there was, is. it was, he carried that episode. It was super well done, but they, they, he tells them, you know, his big evil plan. He monologues for a bit and then they get, she wants to kill him. Loki's like, I think he's telling the truth. Let's, let's hear this guy out. And then they have to kind of turn on themselves and they have a moment where they kiss and then they start fighting, and then she goes ahead and kills off Kang, and that's what kind of like breaks the timeline apart. Everything starts coming apart, and Loki, she kicks him through a portal, and we think that he's back to go talk to Mobius and Agent Number 15 or whatever her name was, 
And we realize they don't even know who he is. So he's already been pushed out into a completely different timeline at this point. Right. It's kind of it's kind of weird because like in the comics, Mobius has, you know, he's basically a clone of a clone and there's a bunch of them. Yeah. And so it's like, is he another clone in the same timeline? Or is it a complete a completely different timeline, you know? Yeah, I immediately thought it was a completely different timeline. I feel like the clone of a clone when they've been pushing timelines all season might feel a little too much <laughs> right now. So maybe that'll be a trick for next time, but maybe it's a trick this time. I don't know. They, they, the one thing we did get is we didn't get an after um, credit scene, but we did get a season two, you know, watch out for Loki season two. So the plot still continues. We don't have to worry about it being finished quite yet. Yeah, the thing for me, I love the show. It's probably my number one, and then yeah. Wanda, and then Falcon. Yep. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like, there's one thing that I didn't like, okay. but it's just me being, being, being greedy. Sure. Is that for me, I I, I hate uh, when they're like, all right, so this is going to be into your, it's going to end with your imagination what's going to happen next, you know? Right. Like, just show me what's gonna happen. I wanna know. Like well, they want they want you to tune in next time. They don't want you to feel like, oh I, it's good. I I don't ever need to watch another thing again. Yeah. So for, for me, the, the this finale seems more like as a mid season finale, you know? Yeah. Like they shot twelve episodes, but they gave us six and called it season one. Yeah, it did feel that way. I almost wonder if a lot of what happened here, though, is going to carry over into some movies. So not only do we not have to wait uh, for season two, but maybe we're going to get a lot of what happened in um, the Multiverse of Madness, the Doctor Strange movie. Maybe we're going to see some of the start to happen in the Spider-Man movie. I feel like with all this multiverse stuff that even though they keep trying to claim that all those spider dudes aren't going to be in it, that I think it's a big secret. And they kind of they're kind of bummed that we all found out. Yeah. And I feel like what if like... Um since this is the start of the timeline, the multiverse, and then the movie goes in and does all the multiverse stuff. And then yeah. season two of Loki is them fixing it because, right. you know, uh, Jonathan Major's character is like, you want, you want to do this? Uh, and he chose them to do this. Yeah. So maybe I mean, Loki this, becomes, you know, the next, the next head of the TVA. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be cool with me. I think that'd be a really good plot. Um, I liked everything about it. I like that, uh, like, if he is, in fact, Immortus, the Nathaniel Richards version, that means we're going to get a, a Fantastic Four with possibly a Black Reed Richards, which would be, which would be really cool, I think. So right. I'd be interested in seeing that as well. But uh, the actors, you know, we were talking about offline who would play Black Reed Richards. And uh, John, is it John William Washington? John something Washington? You know, the bro from uh, Tenet. Tenet. Yeah. Uh, Denzel's, Denzel's kid. Yeah. yeah. He would be perfect, man. I want him in the, the Marvel MCU so bad. Yeah. I like for me, I couldn't think of anybody else. I'm like, who can it play? Maybe Tyrese? Uh, no. <laughs> He's just not a good enough actor, though. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be sweet. So hey, if uh, anybody, Kevin, Kevin Fagg, if you're listening, make sure to hire uh, John something Washington. To be your Reed Richards, because that would be dope. Yeah, for me, my my sh- selfishness, I wanted like um, little glimpses of the timeline that's happening, and like show me what's happening, the chaos of it, and just end it there. Like, yeah, no, the, that would, that would be cool. Give me the visuals and end it. You know, maybe they'll go back. And I don't know if you saw this, and I can't remember if we talked about this ever before, but supposedly they went back and they made a small edit to the WandaVision after credit scene. Did you oh, hear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Did I, we I, talk about that yet? I believe not. It yeah, was during so, our hiatus. So I wonder if it's possible that they could do something like with this show where they come in after a little bit, maybe one of the movies comes out and then they add an after credit scene that gives you some things like that because it was kind of shocking that they didn't have an after credit scene. It was just weird because like the change they made was like so minor. Like I watched it, I'm like, what the hell am I watching? Looks the same. And then I had to watch Wanda Vision. Yeah, and Wanda, I had to watch it again with somebody go side by side explaining where it is. I was like, oh, this is it. So uh, yeah, so let's tell the people what we're talking about. So in Wanda Vision, supposedly they made a minor 
alteration to the final in you know in credit scene of WandaVision after months and months and months after it's yeah. been done. And what it was was someone noticed that they had added almost like a clear shadow of Doctor Strange or somebody. We don't know Doctor could be vision, could be somebody, but it seems to be a body floating down across the hill towards the cabin that Wanda's in doing her weird Wanda in us. And then at the very end, it also mentions now that the Doctor Strange theme song is accredited to Marvel Universe and this kind of thing. So everybody believes that this is Doctor Strange coming in to check on what the hell is going on with Wanda because she, we know for a fact, both her and Loki are in the multiverse of madness. So um, it was kind of like leading us to know that he was there kind of sneakily. Yeah, it, for me, it was kind of strange on their part to decide to add him after the fact. Like, why didn't they give us it beforehand? Like, if you guys just had this plan already, you know? Yeah, no, I. who knows? It's like, are they trying to be tricky? Are they were they hoping no one had noticed that they <laughs> added it later? Or maybe it's not a real ad at all. Maybe it's just a broken artifact and a, a upload. Someone uploaded yeah. the wrong version over the top of the current version. You know, who knows? They made two versions. They uploaded the, the wrong one the first time. Yeah. Like, crap. Yeah, it's it's hard to say, but uh, um, they've been ooh, T Public. You made a sale. I love those. Oh, nice, good job. Um, so now that we have the multiverse officially in the MCU, it didn't take them long to give us Deadpool. And how did they do it? Well, with a commercial. I was so excited when I saw this. So, uh, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, and Korg. Uh, Taika Waititi um, were sitting together in like a fake Deadpool interview show. And in this episode, they were reviewing the Free Guy trailer. What's kind of cool is Disney bought Fox. Fox owns Free Guy. So now everything's kind of coming together. And it's about four minute long thing where they kind of mock it as they watch the trailer. And yeah. it was so funny. It was one of the funnier commercial things as far as PR stuff goes that I've seen in a while. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it is so meta. I loved it. I love every minute of it. Well, I think that we what we've learned is we absolutely need to have Taika direct a Deadpool movie or have a Deadpool show up in a Taika movie. I mean, would it be out of the ordinary at this point to think that he might show up in Love and Thunder? <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll see. Hopefully he does. He's, like that's even his introduction to the MCU. Wouldn't that be amazing? Because I saw um, Taika said that Love and Thunder is the most ridiculous movie that works. He goes, everything about this movie should not have been made and it shouldn't work, but I think this might be my masterpiece. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? What is happening? I need to see this movie now. Like, how crazy is it? And if it's going to get that kind of crazy, I don't think adding Deadpool would be out of, out of you know, out of ordinary at all. It's so strange how, like, it's not someone else saying it, it's himself saying it. Yeah, so it's you're the like, director and the writer. He's so full of himself, you know, but you're like, man, I want to see it so bad. I want to see it so bad. So bad. Um, also with Disney, since we're in the Disney vein, we both saw Black Widow last weekend. And I oh, think yeah. we should re we should review it. We told everybody ahead of time if we saw it, we'd review it. We saw it in two different theaters. You saw it in a big fancy Regal, I want to say. Yes. And you said every seat was sold out and it was a pack theater. Pack but theater. there was... A crying baby? Yeah. For those, if you're a parent, please not do not bring your like three to five or eight month old baby to the theater. Please just that find should a be sitter, common sense. Find a sitter, bring it to your mom or something. This is a freaking movie you could have watched at home. Yeah. <laughs> there was no excuse. Like if you were just so Jones in and you had a little baby and like, oh man, I guess we'll have to take turns going to see it. Nah, fam, you could have watched it in your living room. Yeah, as as they are walking in and coming to their seat, because we have a assigned seats, you know. Yeah. The the dude next to me just had like the biggest sigh. He's like, <sighs> <sighs> he's like, oh <laughs> god damn it. Yeah, and I felt bad for the people around around them feel bad for the people in the, in the theater and i feel bad for the wife because she stayed in the hallway for the whole the whole duration of the movie oh that's terrible they paid money for her to stand in the hallway yeah and like you said they could have paid to watch it at home i feel like this movie may be cursed with just bad people coming to it so while you saw it in a big fancy regal pack theater with crying babies i saw it in the little local movie theater which is like a 
I don't know, uh, eight plex. I don't think it even has a name. It's like cinema eight plex. <laughs> and so we saw it there and it, there was maybe, maybe 12 people in the entire theater. And it was a nice size theater, but there was this one kid in there that I don't know what his deal was. If he just like, just like did lines of like sugar, he's like, he's like, ah, you know, right before he rolled into the black widow, he came with his grandpa. His grandpa was wearing like one of these construction vests, you know, that like glow in the dark. <laughs> You know, see the him in the theater. On. Yeah, I'm like, what is what are these people? And they went, like I said, there's only 12 people in this entire theater. And these fools walk and sit right in front, the very first aisle. Like, so you had to watch the thing like staring up at it. I'm like, nobody chooses those seats on purpose. Those are the seats you get stuck with. Yeah, it's and so your, I'm like, your theater is first come, first serve, right? On seats. Yeah, first come, first serve. Like I said, yeah. this is the local theater. <laughs> there's there's no picking it online. There's none of this garbage about having seats pre-assigned. Yeah, you you show up, you grab a seat. And so that's how it works. And there were all the seats were open, literally all of them. And they sat right in front. I thought, ah, no big deal. You know, this cat, this cat, this kid was like, blah, 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 through the trailers. I'm like, kids do that. Grandpa will shut him up as soon as the movie starts. No, not so much. The kid was still just yapping and making all sorts of noise the entire movie. And then there was this like one jump scare uh, kind of early, I'd say about 20 minutes into the movie where this little bastard jumped up out of fear and ran the hell out of the movie theater. Is it, <laughs> it was so funny. It's probably when um, Taskmaster shoots uh, Will, Black Widow's car. Huh? I think, yeah, I think it was something she, like, because it was she loud. Was driving and it was and all like, oh. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you like it was expected, but not all the way expected. And so the kid jumps out of his seat, bolts the hell out of the theater. Grandpa has to slowly take his, you know, glowing vest after him. <laughs> and they came, unfortunately, they came back in. And the kid shut up for the, the majority of the middle of the movie, but then he got bored and started going, I'm when are we gonna leave? Is the black widow still dead? You know, like you could hear every and they're in the front. I'm in the back. I could hear every word this kid's saying. And then at some point towards with like the last 20 minutes they got up and moved again but they moved right behind us and i was like oh, oh crap this is gonna suck and then he never said a word so maybe he was just too close his brain was like overloaded or something so but uh, let's talk about the movie itself now we talked about our interesting experiences um where are you where would you rate this movie as far as marvel movies um uh, out of nuts wise sure like out of 10 uh, for me, it's like a four. Oh, below average. Yeah. So what did you not like about it? I don't know. I feel like it It didn't really do anything for the universe. It just kind of like gave ScarJo her moment. Like they did it for her rather than the MCU. Yeah, I agree. I feel like that this movie would have come out after the movie Civil War. It would have made a more sense and we would have enjoyed it a lot more um, than we did seeing it now. I feel, I feel like you're right. It was kind of like we need to make a female superhero movie with our most popular female superhero, which is fair. Yeah. yeah. But the execution just wasn't great. Other than I really did like Florence Pugh's character. Um, I'm, I'm adding her to my list of uh, big time crushes. Yeah, she's a good actress. I haven't really seen her in anything besides like that Midsummer movie. Yeah, she was in but, Midsummer and some other crap little things. Yeah, I think my favorite my favorite part of the movie was when she dropped down doing that pose, and she like gave herself the chills. She's like, Ugh. She's like Ugh. yeah, I did like how she kind of makes fun of the Black Widow along the way. She, the, her character is definitely more set in reality so like even when you look at how they're dressed they're both wearing those kind of uh, white jumpsuits and scarlett johansson's is all tight fitting and it's boobs and ass all over the place yeah. and then uh florence's is, is kind of like dumpy and she's tiny i looked at like how tall is this girl she's five foot four i looked it up and so she looks kind of like what, you know, your average cosplayer <laughs> looks like. And so that was kind of funny. And then she makes jokes about her vest with all the pockets. You know, she bought it because she loves the pockets. You know, they have good utility. And then uh, the best one is when she kind of rips on Scar Joe and she's like, what's with this? Why do you always like flip your hair? Why, why are you always flipping your hair? You know, it's like you're posing, you pose her. And, and then she makes fun of like her landing and all these yeah. kinds of things. And it was really kind of funny. Yeah, the like that 
because it's 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 very what do you call that like very dry too because of that yeah the russian accent yeah but, but then like a lot of one-liners that works and i, I feel agree. like I've, go ahead and i feel like they um they push too much of like real real uh problems that we live in real life into the movie too like the whole all the family drama or which parts uh like the sex trafficking basically Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I feel like it's it, it's a big problem. But for me, when I go watch movies, I want to get away from the real life problems that we face right. every day and just go and be immersed in like, you know, the, the MCU or stuff like that. And then they're just going to be like, oh, wait, these life problems follows you too <laughs> to the MCU. But I can yeah, respect you know, that. But it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, man. <laughs> I might get I canceled. Get- I don't think so. I get what you're saying. I think what you're saying makes sense. But at the same time, on the flip side of that coin, kind of what's made Marvel super successful is that they do put build in reality into this fantasy world and it kind of grounds it where it doesn't feel as hokey as sometimes DC can. And so, yeah, I think sometimes it's just a hit and a miss. I feel like the biggest problem with the Black Widow movie was the villain Taskmaster. Um I just feel like it was totally unnecessary. They didn't even need Taskmaster in no. this at all. And uh, the whole like surprise, here comes a spoiler, by the way. Spoiler, if you haven't seen Black Widow, they're like, surprise, it's not the Taskmaster you thought. It's this like my daughter who you blew up <laughs> and I reprogrammed her into be the Taskmaster. And it's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, like like I've been I've been saying before, you know, the show or movie is only as good as its villain. And this one, the, the villain, they didn't really care about who they were fighting. Right. It was more about the 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 family, you know, the family drama. The only thing that was missing was Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. It's all about family, okay? Yeah, no, um, you're you're right. But I, I think I would rate the movie a little bit higher than you. I'd actually I think it's an above average Marvel movie because as much as we go on and on about how much we love Marvel, there's a lot of Marvel movies I'm not a huge fan of. And when you really start to think about all the ones that kind of suck, and there's a bunch of them, this one kind of rates a little bit higher for me than those. So I would give it a solid six. I would say I liked uh, Black Widow. I did not like Taskmaster. Um, The plot was fine. I loved Florence Pugh. I thought uh, The Red Guardian uh, was fun and i heard that he signed on to be in other movies so i'm excited to see more david harbour playing the red guardian nice so i really like the in the lady i can't remember her name but uh, the wife lady she's also been signed on for three more movies I so like, we're gonna see them i saw i saw this meme where they're like the mummy always returns because <laughs> she was the mom in the mummy that's awesome that's a genius it's so good but yeah well, to me as far as things I've seen recently, it was very similar to the Winter Soldier. Uh, if you took the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and didn't break it up into a bunch of episodes, it would be kind of feel like long and drawn out. Also focusing on things that are happening in real life. Also not having the best villain, having some stupid twist that we all kind of, at least with that one, because maybe we had longer to get to it. We saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. But if you took the Black Widow and chopped it up and put it on Disney Plus's episodes, I feel like it would have come off very similar. I feel tonally that this was more about character development in this case, not necessarily Scarlet's, but Florence Pugh's character development and some yeah. of these new ones. Yeah. Okay. I think I would have enjoyed this movie more if it came out sooner. Yeah. Agreed. For me, it yeah. just came out too late. And yeah. it's to a point where I could, I could care less. Like, I didn't even want to go to the theaters to see it. You know, like, well, I was never looking forward to it either. Yeah. And so I just went because, you know, there, there wasn't any other movies. Yeah. I mean, you just want to get out and go to a movie because there just yeah. are no movies. Yeah. So, okay. So that wraps up Disney Plus over on Netflix. I watched a movie that we talked about the trailer um, about two, two or three episodes ago called Gunpowder Milkshake. Oh, is that out? Yeah, it came out. So oh, um, I didn't realize he, like I must have forgot that it was a Netflix original. I thought it was like an actual movie theater movie. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that too. Yeah, so uh, Gunpowder Milkshake is in fact a Netflix original. And it is kind of what we thought um, when we watched the trailer. We said, this looks like female John Wick. So the answer is it's exactly 
<laughs> like female John Wick, but not as good. Uh, Gunpowder Milkshake is not a great movie by any means. Um, it's kind of like if uh, John Wick, Kill Bill, and then I would say maybe Sin City, just because of how Sin City kind of looks, all got together in some sort of gross, hairy orgy. This is what they birthed. And uh, it has a lot of great actresses. It has some really, like, they're so focused, though, on the visuals and the aesthetic and how it looks and how things are happening. that The plot is just ridiculous. <laughs> so um, I would give Gunpowder Milkshake no more than a four at best, maybe a three, depending if I had to watch it again. Wow. Maybe I'll give it a watch. You yeah. Like- I mean, it's if you like gratuitous violence, you're good. It's all sorts of shooting. You can tell it doesn't have quite the budget as a John Wick. It has music that almost sounds like it was ripped right out of John Wick. It has lots of cool slow-mo killing. But the biggest thing that'll jump out to you that bothered the hell out of me for the entirety of the movie is the fighting seems so choreographed, so staged. And the way she ends up beating people, they just had to be fucking idiots. Like she can't like John Wick's like a badass and stabbing people with pencils and doing all his things. Like these guys, she fights like groups of men that just are idiots and they hurt themselves half the time. <laughs> See, that's, that's how I feel watching, um, you know, for example, Iron Fist. Mm. Dude don't know any martial arts and it was so just like, oh my gosh, not natural at all, you know? Exactly. That's perfect. It's not natural. And you know it when you see it. Like there's lots of fight scenes that are all obviously all fight scenes in movies are choreographed. But there are some when you watch them, it's like almost like they're dancing or they're just running through this. Like they're still learning. They're practicing. And that's what this movie looks like. I'll give them a couple props without ruining it for anybody that wants to see it. There's a couple like really interesting fight scenes where you would not expect what's going to happen to happen. Like they fight once they all get injured and then they all end up in the same hospital. And so then all the injured people fight with all the injuries, like someone's in a wheelchair and other guys on crutches. So that was kind of funny. Cause that, I'd never seen that before. And that worked better than her just like kicking the shit out of people. But uh, um, I did like the actresses. I liked um, I liked some of the stylistic portions of it, but otherwise not a great movie. Yeah, I'm surprised because you know, like uh, for example, if you look at Charisse Theron, yeah, you're like she's not a fighter, but every fighting movie she's in, badass, you know, yeah, like totally good. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's either a the actor or it's b the choreographer, whoever they're hiring to put this together. So right. maybe they should find out whoever <laughs> doing Charlie's. Just use use them. Yeah, use them over and over again. Uh, for those who do like the movie, it has already been signed for a, se- a sequel. So um, whether you like it or not, there will be a sequel to this movie. Well, I guess the milkshakes, the milkshakes got the boys coming. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> my milkshake brings a little boys to the yard and then you're like, mine's better than yours. Damn right. Mine's better than yours. Um. Netflix, you know, I don't know, you probably noticed this, right? It started on network TV and it's been spreading like wildfire where they are doing uh, uh, dating game shows on everything. So dating shows, you know, Bachelor was like the OG. And then all of a sudden you start having people humping on like islands. Everything was island this, island that, you know, Love Island, uh, you know, all these different things. Well, Netflix is uh, starting to do this too. And they've had some boring ones in the past, (laughs) but they've taken the idea of the dating beautiful people game show and the masked singer, and they've merged them into (laughs) a really weird uh, game show called sexy beasts. And in sexy beasts, uh, you get the beautiful people. Maybe you throw the uh, masks on them and then you send them on a date. So they're, they can see each other's bodies. Like if she's a hot and he's a hot, you can see like yeah, their yeah. physiques, but you don't get to see any faces. So it forces them to have to try to get to know each other. And they send them out into like real world environments. So they're like at restaurants and out and about and people are just kind of like looking at them. So it looks a little kind of funny, at least the gimmick, something different than what I've seen in the past, but it's interesting that they've, they're trying this out. Is it, is it out? Uh, I think it's coming out soon, like really soon. 
Yeah, that's like right up my wife's alley, man. She loves all those stuff like too hot to handle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So you're going to love this. Maybe I'll just jump over to this real quick. So like I said, it's the thing right now to have those types of shows. So HBO Max is also dipping their toes Ooh. in what has to be the best titled version of any of these. It's called Fuck Boy Island. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up? So, well, they call it F Boy Island, oh. but we know what it means right so f boy island is premiering on hbo max and here's their gimmick so it's the same idea it's a dating show but i didn't even realize this is a thing i'm too old but apparently guys that just date girls to get their their game on you know like ooh, 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 bedtime these guys are called fuck boys and that's all they do they're not there for real relationships so they've taken three hot girls who all seem like idiots, even though in the trailer they say how smart they are <laughs> several times and like 25, like just good looking bros. Right. And so they got the 25 guys and here's it is. It's not just a dating show, but they're also offering money, a hundred thousand dollars to one of the F boys. If they can convince and trick the girls into picking them in the end, because 12 out of the 25 guys are good guys. So 12 of them are good guys. The rest of them are fuck boys. The girls have to decipher through a series of dating and games and things. Who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? The bad guy makes it all the way to the end with one of the girls. He wins the money kind of a thing. Right. So it's both a dating and a game show. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> right up my wife's alley. She's going to watch it too. <laughs> yeah. So you got a couple of them. Sexy Beast and F-Boy. <laughs> F-Boy <laughs> Island is hosted by uh, Nikki Glazer too. So that that I'm a little bit behind that because she's a fave of mine. Um, also on Netflix, did you see, I'm just going to mention this. I don't have any information on it, so I can't get too deep into it before we jump off of Netflix. That they're uh, sticking their toes in the video game realm. They're going to start making Netflix original video games. Yeah, so, I'm like... I think maybe the way they're going to go about it, it's kind of like what Google is doing, right? Mm, I think so, yeah. Like it's in the cloud. You got to buy this controller sort of thing. Yeah, you're going to have to buy probably a Netflix controller and it'll be, I would imagine, fairly simple games. But I don't know. I mean, uh, Boy Danger plays all of his video games through the interwebs. So I suppose it could be something like a shooter or sports game. Because they brought on, I guess, uh, um, people from EA Sports and other big franchises to help build this because uh, they think this could be the future. Yeah, I think for me, I'm probably just getting too old for this, but I never got into the subscription based video games yeah. just because I, I don't play or I don't, you know, I don't have time to play that much games. Like, I can't, <laughs> I don't have time, dude. It's clearly the future because it's mad money for these companies. Rather than selling the kids one $60 game every year, they sell, they don't sell, they give them a free game and then they get them five, 10, $15 at a time until next thing you know, the kids spent 500 bucks a year on the same video game. And yeah. I can, I can attest to that that's what's happening because it's happening in my house. Yeah. Little, little games, man. Little games equal big games. Oh yeah. Um, also on HBO max uh, besides F boy Island, is Titans season three. I know that you're a Titans fan. I haven't watched any of it, but after seeing the season three trailer, I'm kind of like, I think I might want to watch this show now. It looks really? pretty good. Is it always look that good? Yeah, man. From day one. I love it. It's kind of like, if you like Doom Patrol, you'll like this. It's basically okay. rated R uh, Batman. Yeah, and I love Doom Patrol, but I like the funniness of Doom Patrol. Does uh, Titans have any like silliness going on? Uh, I think it's a little more serious. The only silliness is when you meet Beast Boy. He's kind of okay. funny because he's kind of like a fanboy. Oh, okay. So, you, so it's kind of like you, you relate to him because, like, for example, he goes with uh, Robin and he's like, I can't meet Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, no, and I, I'm in this. This trailer alone made me want to watch the first two seasons. So I think I'm going to jump into it, maybe start watching it as my lunchtime show. Because they introduced the Red Hood. I don't know if he's been in it up until now. Oh, no, no. He's he's the new baddie in season. So he's season new three. for season three. So I'm I'm down. I'm down just for the Red Hood. I'm going to tell Boy Danger about this because he's a huge Red Hood fan for some reason. But then the, the only disappointing thing is like the, the actor that was is playing Jason Todd. He's yeah. kind of he's kind of annoying. Oh, well, that sucks. So uh, he you know, how he becomes Red Hood in the comics. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm hmm. It's it's I'm interested to see what they're going to do with it. 
Yeah, because I was always thinking this was more CWE than HBO Maxi, but maybe it's kind of finding that fine line. And CW has been doing better, like the Superman and Lois, so maybe they're they're up in their game. Yeah. Well, if you watch like episode one of Titan, it gets really uh, gruesome. Like like Ro- mm-hmm. like Robin goes and fights, and they're just like, "Oh damn, this is this is a DC show." Okay. And um, and I didn't realize this, but basically later on, you, you know the 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 Robin, the the other Robin, the Beast mm-hmm. Boy, they're the new Titan that's coming into the the um the team, and there's the older Titans that were there and kind of like retired. Oh, like, okay. Like, so like the second gen. Yeah, like Minka Kelly uh, plays Dove. That one uh, blonde dude that was from that street racing killer show that we like, Bloodbath or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he Blood, plays. Yeah, Blood Drive or. Blood Drive. <laughs> yeah. He plays Hawk, and they're basically the, the OG Titans. That's cool. Okay, I'm in. You've sold me. If I guess if anybody else out there hasn't been watching Titans, I say jump on it. Why not? I mean, it's three um, three seasons. It must be good, right? Yeah, it keeps getting renewed. So that, that's yeah. saying something for the quality of it. Um, also on HBO Max, by the time everybody listens to this podcast, uh, Space Jam's out. So oh, Space yeah. Jam for you and I, we're in real time here on Thursday, comes out on Friday. So we'll be able to review Space Jam by um, next episode. But the early reviews have been terrible. Apparently oh, people yeah. hate this movie. It's probably so, terrible too. <laughs> Almost guaranteed it's terrible, but I'll watch for Dame Lillard and Dame Lillard alone. And, you know, I'm already paying for HBO Max, so why not? Yeah, it, it makes you wonder, like, how come Disney is charging you 30 bucks for a movie and HBO is not? This is the reason. Yeah, that's right. It's terrible. <laughs> the movies aren't good. Yeah, every, every HBO movie you watch, did you like them? There hasn't been a good one, but however, however, I have heard early reviews. Um, one guy I follow on uh, Twitter and I really respect his opinions. They're very similar to yours and I's. Um, said that uh, the new Suicide Squad. He got early, early review of it is amazing. Like the best thing that James Gunn has ever made. Like better than Guardians. What? Yeah. Better than Guardians? <laughs> yeah, he said it's it's a fantastic film. So and that's going to be I think one of the last straight to HBO Max releases. I am all about suicide squad so i'm i'm man. here for it don't matter man my girl margo's in there watching <laughs> i mean it's loaded with great cast members i told you that i was trying to buy the mcfarland toys figures i was telling Rin off air I go, yeah i really wanted to get king shark and i went to the store and they said it was a walmart exclusive and it wasn't there and he's like you idiot you have to buy all of them to get king shark and none of them are even out yet i'm like god Damn it. So I wasted my time going into a Walmart for no reason. And if I want King Shark, it's going to cost me like $150 because you had to buy all of them. It says not going to happen. It says pre order. (laughs) I need to read better. And also, I'm never going to own King Shark because I'm not spending that kind of money to buy all the figures. So, you listeners out there, if you want to donate some parts of King Shark to Oh Boy, you know, feel free. Yeah, if you buy the figures and want to send me just the King Shark pieces, that's the only guy I want. I really want King Shark. So uh, I think this is the perfect time to take a quick break. And on the flip side, we'll get to our tasty trailers and our news jacuzzi. See you on the other side. Need affordable graphic design? Visualantidesign.com should be your first stop. High quality work at low, low prices. Perfect for every need from corporate to personal. Visit Visualantidesign.com now and request your free quote. And for a limited time, mention Audio Knots for 10% off your first project. And we're back with some tasty trailers. So my first tasty trailer is actually on a show that's on its third season, kind of like Titans, uh, called What We Do in the Shadows. And um, I'm here to tell everybody, I don't know, have you watched any of What We Do yet? It's funny how I recommend that to you and I never watched it. (laughs) It's so good. I have to be honest. It may be one of my favorite shows I've seen in a long time. It's so funny. You know how we really liked the tone of the wildebeest and that kind of thing? Yeah. Even though this is completely different genre, the tone and the humor is the same. And it gives them me that still those same good vibes. And so if you're not watching what we do in the shadows, you are really missing out. This show is hilarious. Yeah, I'm going to start watching it for sure. 
Okay, for, how about this? For I'll Taika. start watching Titans, and you start watching what we do in the shadows, and we'll kind of like as you're watching that one, I'll watch this one. And we'll like compare notes. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it for is sure. uh, uh, produced by Taika Waititi. It was based off of a movie they made at one point. But it it follows a handful of vampires, kind of office style. It's like a documentary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the the teaser trailer shows the main vampire trying out these VR goggles, and it's I mean it's so simple but so funny. And I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm in. Yeah, it's funny because like at the beginning where you think he was walking in like an actual park, yeah. it turns out he was in a VR. And like, oh shit, he's a vampire. He can't go to the actual park in the sun. <laughs> yeah, he can't go during the day in the sun, and he ends up like walking into a wall when he's busy being distracted by a girl in a bikini. It was pretty yeah. funny. So, um, what we do in the shadow season three premieres on FX for Hulu. Uh, September 3rd. So that gives you plenty of time to watch the first two seasons to catch up. Yeah, I got to get caught up. Now, when we move over to what's going on, some more trailers on Netflix, they're giving us mad trailers for Witcher. We got an animated Witcher and we got a real season Witcher. So let's start with uh, the first one that actually comes out is the animated one. Uh, Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf, which is a cool name, by the way. Uh, What did you think about that trailer? Hold on. Was there a trailer? All I saw was like a teaser where you see like the main dude and that's it. Oh, I watched the trailer. There was a trailer. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch the trailer then. I watched the teaser. Crap. Oh, it looks cool. Yeah, there's about a two minute trailer out for uh, Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf and the animation looks really clean. It looks kind of like the Ca- Castlevania type animation, but I enjoyed it. Um, the voices sounded good. Uh I don't know. It looks it looks like they can do things in the animation that they can't obviously do on the TV shows sometime. And I feel like the Witcher series is it may be the closest thing we're going to get to Game of Thrones, the, that that good Game of Thrones kind of feeling. Yeah. I really like how they're developing this world. Yeah, I think that 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 trailer, wait, what are we talking about? The the Witcher trailer? I watched that one. Okay, and... well, hold on before we jump over there. Uh, the Nightmare of the Wolf comes out August 23rd, while The Witcher Season 2 doesn't come out till December 17th. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, after watching The Witcher trailer, gave me yeah. goosebumps, man. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, he's finally hanging out with, uh, what's her name, Cirilla or Cirilla? Or... I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna name my kid after that, just letting you know. Really? The Witcher? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call her. You're going to name hey, your kid Witcher. The Witcher? Hey, Witcher, come over here. No, if like um, I don't have any kids yet, but when I do, if I have a, yeah. if I have a a, 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 um, a girl, yeah, I'm gonna have her middle name be Cirilla. Oh, perfect! That's a cool yeah. name. It is. Yeah, no, I agree. So we're I finally wanna... gonna get Cirilla and the Witcher hanging out. Yeah, I want to. I want to say this first because after season two, there's gonna be so many Cirillas out there. <laughs> That's a good point. You're right. Well, a lot of times when shows are hugely popular, the amount of babies that get named after the characters is pretty high. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. And just to be fair, I want to name her after the video game because I played it before I watched the show. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Uh, Cyril in the video game, does she get naked and get it on with people? All the time. No, I'm, I'm oh, not sure. No, not in the game. Well, you can't name your kid that then. <laughs> no, she's basically uh, the queen of space and time. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. I want to be the queen of space and time. Um, yeah, this this show like looks really good. They're just continually improving. If anybody yeah. like was sleeping on The Witcher and they weren't so sure about it, it's absolute. I, in fact, I think... In fact, I'm certain I'm going to rewatch season one so that I am all caught up again because it, it's a little confusing because they do some timeline jumping. Yeah. And so now that I understand the plot, I'm going to like it even more, I think. And it will really set me up for season two. Yeah, I think they had to do that for season one just to catch everybody up. And then I think season two is going to be just straight, you know, uh, secret timeline style going forward. Yeah, no, I, I'm it looks really good. Like. Uh, the acting's top notch. The um, scenery and the cinematics are great. The special yeah. effects are good, and it just has a good story for something that was based. Is it was it a book first, then a video game? Yeah, book and then a video game. Yeah, that I think that helps. These ones that are based on these books are usually pretty good. It's interesting that it did the opposite of a lot of stuff where it went book, video game, TV series versus book, either movie or TV series, and then video game. 
Yeah, because um, the video games, it comes after the books. The one I played. So this is like... Oh, based... as far as the timeline, you mean? Yeah, so this is... Because like in part in part three of The Witcher in the game aspect, uh, they're, everyone's older. And this is still like when they were younger. So uh, the video games then are not actually based on the books. They're their own original stories. They are, but then the first two are kind of terrible. Oh, yeah. So it took so them like, a while to figure it out. Yeah, so nobody, nobody really talks about those. But it tells you the story. And then the, the, the third one was the best one. Got it. Got it. Could you play the third one without having ever played the first two and still be able to follow along? Yes. Okay. So everybody should go play Witcher uh, video game number three and then watch the first season of the show because they're both good. It's a fun uh, fact. Um, Henry Cavell, dude's yeah, Superman. A big, yeah, he's a big gamer, and he actually played the game first, and then he wanted to be uh, he he and then he auditioned for the role. Oh, so he kind of like said, "I want to be in this." And yeah, he managed to get that's good because after the Superman debacle, for him to land in a real decent franchise is really good because he's a great actor. Yeah, love him, man. Me too. I like him a lot. Um, my final trailer in the Tasty Trailers is called Turning Red. This is going to be the newest Pixar movie. I forgot to look when this comes out, so I apologize for that. Uh, but, uh, spring 2022. Oh, there you go. Spring 2022. And Turning Red is a uh, little girl Hulk, I think. What did you think about the Turning <laughs> yeah. Red? Yeah. Was that the first thing you thought of? I'm like, first of all, I love red pandas. Yes. They're like my favorite animal. Every time I see them, they're so cute. They are my, so cute. My wife's like, why do you like them so much? Do you, do you not see them? <laughs> if they could domesticate red pandas as a pet, I will have one. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's what you should be breeding. Forget the fish. You should be selling homemade red pandas. <laughs> yeah, and I, these are home raised. So, <laughs> you know, they don't, they won't attack you. And it's super friendly. They won't rip your face off. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was cute. Uh, like you said, it's, it's a little... Asian Incredible Hulk is <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, so the basic plot of, as far as I can tell, from uh, Turning Red, because it was more of a teaser than a full trailer, is it cuts in and showing the little girl in school, and she's getting kind of amped up about taking some sort of math test, and her mom is like spying on her from outside, and all the kids start to spot her mom, kind of peering in, hiding behind a tree, and she's getting worked up, and the more she gets kind of frustrated and worked up and anxious, uh, it, she's her emotions kick in, and all of a sudden she goes, Poof! and she turns into this giant red panda, and everybody's like, "What the hell?" And then she like kind of flees away, and it, the rest of the trailer is her kind of running to hide and trying to calm herself down to where she could turn back into a human. And so it looks really cute, but it's just not quite enough for us to know the the full blown story. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm. It looks. It looks like you say. It looks cute. I'm excited for it. And. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll see it. Uh, I was excited to see the trailer. Man, it feels like Pixar and Disney have been just kicking out movies. Used to be uh, Pixar movies only came out like once every like four years, and now it's like one or two a year. It's incredible. They're making it up to us for um, not having anything during the first year of Disney+. Plus. It's probably because it's the one thing that you could do during the pandemic is just animate, you know, because it wasn't you could put guys in different cubicles, keep them far away and just keep animating. Yeah, I, I feel like people are used to watching animation now. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you never watched this much animation in your life until now. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, see. No, for sure. So, uh, OK, let's uh, dip our toes in the news jacuzzi. I'm trying something new. So it's taken me all this time to realize that I have two screens in front of me and to put my tabs on this screen. So I think it'll run faster where I don't have to uh, jump around and miss things. So it pulls. Yeah, for the for the listeners, old boy Eric was using a uh, iPad this whole time. And he had dual monitors. <laughs> well, it throws me off because I'm using Boy Danger's gaming setup. And this, if you, too bad you guys can't see from this view, there's like this computer on the right that's got all this colory shit happening, and there's fans and like every damn thing on it like lights up. And then there's a big monitor in front of me. And then to the left, there's one, but it's like flipped sideways and it's like vertical. And so he's got like um, these background wallpapers of like anime people like throwing lightning bolts at each other. And I've always just assumed 
I'm not going to bother with this one. It's a pain in the ass. And so I just use my iPad, my, sh- my show notes. I'd jump back and forth, but it would always like take a while to load and be a total pain. So it finally occurred to me after 6,000 episodes of this dumb show that I could just load the news stories on this really tall screen. And it looks awesome. I don't know what I was thinking. So our first story, we teased it last week, is called uh, the v- VR Waifu Weddings. And uh, I said Waifu because that was hilarious. It's still, by the way, it's still written Waifu on my iPad. But uh, VR goes too far with <laughs> Waifu VR Weddings is the name of the story. Get my mouse do, going. So do share. I'm so interested in this story. This is pretty incredible. So it says, uh, incredible things are happening in virtual reality from gaming to helping business industries to architecture and so much more. But now I have to say that VR has taken it a little too far and is officially being abused. <laughs> uh, Ruppel TV has posted a video of somebody getting married to their anime waifu through VR. They even have the picture sh- sessions on top of the actual wedding ceremony. And so it says uh, there was this video game where they would actually, uh, I believe this is in, I want to say South Korea, that they would, the guys could play the video game and they date, it's like a dating game. And they meet the wa- the waifus that they like and they date them and they do all these things with their computers, you know, like they're tapping away on their keyboard and falling in love with their virtual friend. And as the finale of it, they can go the, to these places that like mall kiosks where they show up and this guy's like seriously wearing a full-blown tuxedo and then they set up a camera behind it and so he can look at the tv and so he doesn't see anything obviously but when he looks at the tv the 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 waifu he's been dating online is superimposed in a wedding dress alongside of him and they take it totally seriously they have like a full-on like minister like reading him their vows (laughs) like a real guy this isn't this isn't vr so the the minister is real the groom is real and then there's a photographer taking pictures and somehow they have it set up so when she takes the pictures uh the the waifu virtual reality lady shows up in the photos too so they have wedding photos when it's all said and done i i can't believe this is real no wonder their their ladies are making fun of their tiny penises that's so wild there's i don't know man like have you seen the girls in, in South Korea? Man, they're they're really pretty. I don't know why. Yeah, but that's where all the hots are. So <laughs> this guy wants what to do some giant doing? eyed cartoon. <laughs> what, what are you guys doing? doing, man? Maybe because they don't make fun of your tiny wings. Like, <laughs> they're very this submissive. Is, it, what a world we live See, in. You know, because <laughs> like that. Um we the the thing was always like oh well when you start letting like the the bad people of the world say when you start letting other people men date men and women marry women and all these things next thing you know they're gonna want to marry their dogs and it's like get the fuck out of here nobody's gonna want to do that oh you, but you don't know man <laughs> but now we're seeing in fact that people do want to marry their animated cartoon girlfriends and we've already seen the people that want to like marry their sex dolls so the idea of like having this like intense relationship with an inanimate object is a real thing. And I honestly, you wonder, we're laughing at it, but should there be some sort of like, I don't know, like help for these people? Because that's how sad is that if that's really your life? I mean, it's one thing if you're doing it and you're playing the game and it's all kind of fun to you, it's be no different than maybe playing a little dungeon and dragons where you're pretending, you know, to fight dragons and, go through caves and whatnot but if you're doing this and you're like legitimately in love with some sort of animated character there's something wrong right i mean like don't get me wrong man i love waifus but (laughs) (laughs) but i'm not gonna try to go and marry one dude that's that's just (laughs) insane man wait you're you're not gonna marry your wife no oh okay that's good my my wife's uh (laughs) name in my phone is called waifu she's my waifu there you go so is waifu literally just translated means wife i have no idea dude <laughs> we all say it but i don't know yeah. either i figured it was like an anime thing i don't know i just i just never looked it up and i just assumed that you know waifu means big big titty hot girls 
<laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I think that's exactly what it means. Um, if you want to be more normal or a little less weird than this, uh, and you want to hang out with animated friends, what you need to do is go to gorickyourself.com. That's gorickyourself.com. Uh, this is a brand new website created by the Rick and Morty creators where you can go on there and you can create your own um, version, your own Rick and Morty cartoon character of yourself. They did this a long time ago with like the Simpsons. You can go Simpson yourself and they've done it with other cartoons, but this is actually kind of fun. So right before we kicked open this episode, I ricked myself and you ricked yourself. I ricked myself so hard. No one was looking. So it was okay. But uh uh, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't look exactly like me. I tried my hardest, but they didn't quite have the right facial hair that I have going on. But um, I have ricked myself. Unfortunately, I, I don't know if I can Let's try something. This, this is when you need your iPad. Oh, oh, does it show the screen? Nope. See, I should have had it on my iPad. <laughs> so uh, it looks, it looks take, like take a, a bald dude with glasses, but he has, oh, I, I see could, what you're saying. Take a picture with your iPad and show your iPad. Okay, let's try that. I'm gonna try this. And this is this is this is amazing technology at work. We're gonna take a photograph of a screen with my iPad, then we're gonna show said screen on so, so it's kind of like when you're making your uh an emoji on your iPhone, huh? That you kind of pick. What the hell? I that's, that's that was weird. Missing. It was the time clock lady. <laughs> that's just Miss Minute, dude. <laughs> that's this you. Is my, well that's the best i could do they didn't have so anybody has you know if you're just listening you need to jump over to youtube oh, this yeah, is the best fine. i could do because i i was i was fair i didn't give myself any hair i gave myself the, they only had round glasses they didn't have the more square glasses and then that was the closest facial hair that they had to me i gave myself a good button-up shirt and some blue jeans but yeah, yeah that was the best i could do yeah make sure to like tweet that because I'll, I'll go make one for me and tweet myself too yeah, that's a, I mean, people should at the very least just for, you know, shits and giggles, make yourself and maybe make it like your Twitter profile for a hot minute or something because that'd be kind of fun. That's I'm going to see the sun coming through. I'm going to use our our rigs and just uh, make it our thumbnails for our YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So uh, my next story, uh, we also teased this one last week. Ed Sheeran is, <laughs> it sounds like a nightmare house guest. Uh, this was a story that uh, I believe he told to James Cordon on the James Cordon show. But basically, <laughs> the story says, please take a moment to prepare your mind and body for a series of sentences that can only be described as disorienting. Ed Sheeran and Courtney Cox are close friends, which is kind of cool. I had no idea that was going on. Um it says what great question apparently a mutual friend introduced them and now uh when sharon is in los angeles he always stays with his bestie courtney cox the two recently uh, recreated the iconic friends dance routine originally performed by the siblings monica and ross which i saw and it's hilarious so if you haven't seen that you should look it up um and uh however the most confounding thing is he likes to play a lot of pranks and so Sheeran was recently on the Late Late Show to promote his vampire anthem, Bad Habits, and he told host James Cordon he has a running bit where he orders Cox s and leather gimp masks every time he visits. Uh, <laughs> Once upon a time, Cox and Sheeran were hanging out, as they do, because, again, they are close friends, and Cox talked about being able to buy anything she wants using her Alexa device. This is something I'm pretty sure all Alexas do. So Ed Sheeran being the genius, hilarious guy he is, when left alone in the room with said Alexa, said, hey, Alexa, order me a Gimp mask. <laughs> and so it already has Courtney Cox's address pre-programmed into it. So it sent her, <laughs> it sent her a Gimp mask, ball gag and everything uh, to her house to where she was like super confused until she finally started her figure out what was happening and if he was staying long enough so if he was hanging out for a week because thank you amazon for your two-day shipping he would actually receive said gut uh, get masks and he would place them in different guest bedrooms in her home on different beds so when other people came to visit if she wasn't paying close enough attention yeah. they would also find said get masks and the best part about this whole thing is it's using courtney's amazon account so he's pranking her with her own money <laughs> 
I'm surprised you could buy them on Amazon. That's pretty. It makes me kind of want to look to see what the Amazon get mass selection is because I haven't checked that out. That's probably one of the things I should have done is a little bit of research, but uh, kudos to you, Ed Sheeran. Uh, honestly, Courtney Cox should be wearing get masks all the time because her face looks like a melted candle these days. So I think maybe he's trying to subtly tell her that, hey, listen, Courtney, this is uh, this is not great. They're just friends. They're like nothing beyond that. Well, who knows? It's Hollywood. <laughs> Man, it's weird. They, it, it is weird. So my final story, my final story is a little bit darker. Uh, this is the one that's going to put everybody in a sad mood before they, they finish the episode. Um, but NASA has recently, re- bleh, me, has recently reported uh, the moon is starting to wobble. We have a wobbly moon. It says the wobbly moon uh, will increase flood risks over the next decade. Uh, the celestial bodies complex corkscrewing orbital, God damn it, with all these tongue twister words, paths through the cosmos are far from fixed, dis- despite how they appear from Earth. A subtle changes in our planet, our moon and sun all move and interact and can have considerable consequences for our life. One such process is how the moon orbits the Earth. It doesn't just whip smoothly around in an endless perfect spiral but instead its revolutions fluctuate or wobble, as NASA puts it. Over an 18-year cycle, the slow wobble either suppresses or amplifies the tides on Earth. So if we skip ahead, it says, during half of the cycle, high tides are higher, low tides are lower. During the other half of the cycle, less extreme tides are recorded. Meanwhile, Human-induced climate crisis means sea levels are only going way up. This means that the next time the moon wobbles its way into an amplification phase, uh, beginning around 2030, so for those keeping track, that's nine years from now, higher tides, higher sea levels are going to combine to (laughs) impact global coastlines. This is expected to cause a leap in flood numbers on almost a U.S. mainland on almost all U.S. mainland coastlines, Hawaii, and Guam. Um, Only farther north coastlines, including Alaska, will be spared. So they're basically saying, uh, if you live in any of these coastlines, you're about to uh, be underwater in a few occasions. So that kind of sucks. That that's kind of scary to think about. Yeah, I mean, um, things are changing, obviously, from climate change. But then you learn that when something that's normal, this happens every so often. But the fact that our tides have raised, and we all realize that's because the um, ice caps are melting and our, our ocean levels are rising, that when we get this more wobbly moon, all of a sudden we're going to have some really bad flooding. And I think that, you know, if you're on, like, if you live anywhere on the coastlines and you already have issues with that sometimes, I say put your house up for sale. You got about eight years to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Go inland, man. Yeah, and for all the people that are going to act surprised when this happens in eight years or eight and a half years, that's on you. You weren't paying attention because, uh, yeah, it's not great. It's not a good look for us. It's like when, um, um, what's, the, what's the Microsoft guy's name? Uh, Who are we talking about? Microsoft guy? Oh, Bill uh, Gates. Bill, Bill Gates, Gates, yeah. He's like, yeah, there's going to be a, a big pandemic virus going to wipe out you know, half the human race. The worst part about that, though, is when these guys can see like they can usually literally use science and math and all these things to predict this stuff. People look back and say, oh, they did it. They caused it. I'm like, no, they didn't cause it. They warned us and we ignored it. (laughs) So you've been warned there's going to be big, big flooding in 2030, which is a nice even number. So it makes it easy for everybody to remember. So we got nine years. Uh, eight and a half. We have eight and a half years before, uh, you know, we'll get to get, you know, waterfront property in Arizona. So I'm going to go to Hawaii next year and enjoy my time while I, while I still can. Yeah. Get your Hawaii trips in over the next few years because it may not be as fun afterwards. Uh, that's all I had though. Do you have anything else you want to like hit on before we close up this episode? Oh, I forgot to mention, I watched plan B. Oh, on yeah, a how, how, how you thought about that? Freaking movie's hilarious. <laughs> Highly recommend. I was laughing out loud so much, man. It's 
it's, it's so funny. I told you I didn't yeah. steer you wrong. And then the actresses in there, they're yeah. really good. I enjoy them. I don't know who they are. I've never seen them before. Yeah. And I really enjoy their acting. But it was much better than uh, Booksmart, right? Well, I can't say because I've never seen Booksmart. So Okay. Well, you, now you're going to be disappointed. Maybe you should watch Booksmart first. Booksmart's not a bad movie. So I'm not like, I'm not bagging on Booksmart. It's just not nearly as funny as plan B. And for whatever reason, book smart caught the eye of everybody and it got a lot more press and prestige. But uh, yeah, if you have Hulu, you need to be watching plan B. Yeah. And that one scene you mentioned, Oh my gosh, it was in the so park. In, yeah. In the playground is so insane. Is like, yeah. Cause when you're, when you see it, you think, well, they can't do that in a movie. Oh my God, they did. <laughs> Yeah, because remember last episode, I told you that um, it's going to be a movie my wife and I will watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I I knew that she's going to like it because she likes that, you know, sexual crude humor. Crude humor perfect. is the best. Yeah. And this is perfect. And she's just laughing her ass off the whole time. It's, yeah, it's good, this movie, yeah. they've tried really hard to have the female versions of, like you said, super bad. I would even go further back and say American Pie for a while. And this one did it. I think it hit the nail on the head. It was very much in vain in those kinds of movies. Yeah. And then the, the Indian girl, Sunny. Yeah. Man, she's hilarious. Her, her big eyes. I mean, she's just like, <laughs> like when she was on PCP and she's like looking, the thinking, uh, I've, I've, I've gone through all the scenarios. <laughs> Yeah, she was like doing like crazy fast math. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's she's on speed. Yeah. So funny. It's like you know Doctor Strange doing his like uh, time stone thing. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Ren recommends Plan B, and so do I. So everybody needs to check that out because that movie is hilarious. Yeah. Anything else? That's it, man. <laughs> cool, cool beans. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. We'll see you guys next time. Everybody, have a good one. Bye. Show me what you got.